My people, it don't happen again. No, Nigeria police don't expose those people where they claim say they want to overthrow Bola Ahmed Tinubu's government. And as matter being now, they don't catch nine people where they say they be involved. Oh, I am making a watch this video and see their identities. And as you are watching, do not forget to like and share. We have declared then wanted again the the foreigner one, Mr. Andrew wine who has many identities but for now with the latest record we have is uh, a british national and one nigerian lucky uh, his obinia these ones have been declared wanted and we want the understanding of the media to please um publicize this message and these individuals their pictures are going to be released any moment from now and we're going to continue to publish the the gazette declaring them wanted by the nigeria police force any moment from now i have them already after this press briefing you are going to have them uh, on your platforms and it's it will be widely circulated for people to have a look and to actually help us to circulate them and i'm sure you are aware I've given you the names of the suspects that have been charged to court, 10 of them. Some of them might still be at large. Some of them, uh, while the investigation is ongoing, we may likely still pick some of them that have, have not been arrested yet. The investigation is ongoing, but the case has been charged to court. Well, the, 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 I don't want us to dwell much on the NSC issue. The NSC president and leadership, uh, the, the leadership has been uh, invited. The NSC president came, and I made a, a statement here in my in one of the paragraphs of my speech that following the the interaction between the police investigation team and the NSC president, there is now a clearer understanding of the focus of the ongoing police investigation and the depth of Mr. Andrews Wine's subversive network and activities. The, incidentally, the, when the NSC president came, we made it clear that, in fact, the NSC as a body is not in charge of subletting their facilities to certain individuals. If he did not come, we would not know. The place is called the Labor House and it's NSC property. But there are certain administrative issues there that are known to the public, to the police, but known to the NSC. So it's always good to work together with the police. In fact, when a case is ongoing and police is inviting you to come forward, it's to actually clear gray areas, not to enchant anybody. I am sure by now the NSC president will appreciate the police for even inviting him. Because the NSC president and the leadership of the NSC, all of them, they were not aware of the personality of this man. They were not aware of certain things this man uh, has been doing in the premises. So by now I think the NSC as a body we even prefer to work with the police to get to the root of this matter for the sake of our country, for the sake of our democracy in Nigeria and for the sake of our national unity and development. So it, it, this matter now is we want patriotism. It's a matter, it's a national interest, a national issue that all Nigerians should be interested in. For a foreigner to come to this place and have sleeper cell, mobilize, recruit certain Nigerians, paint them, purposely to plan for how to topple our democratic government in Nigeria and call for regime change unconstitutionally. i sure no Nigerian will be in support of such an idea. So the, the, this, this matter has even gone beyond the issue of whether the police or security forces uh, invaded the NSC secretariat or whether the NSC president uh, was invited by the police. We have gone beyond this level. I'm sure for those who have facts about this case and with the little we have given out today, everybody will understand why the Nigerian government and all security forces, particularly the police, are very serious about this matter. We don't want to still reveal so many things. This is the little we can give out for now. That's the name of the man.
Mr. Andrews Mwang. I mean financial sponsors. He, Mr. Andrew, Mr. Andrew Wine. Is the one disbursing money? We are still going to continue. This this matter is we are just starting this matter. We're still going to have many follow-up stories about this matter. We'll continue to update you as uh, events unfold. But the man is financing and we have recovered contents and documents to prove that. Those who have benefited from the man to particularly, particularly plant elements amongst protesters and cause problems in Nigeria. So it, it, it's, um, it's, 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 it's what, like what we call uh, a, season, a season film. We'll continue to up update and up update Nigerians, particularly brief the media. Uh, and we want to see, seek your understanding in this regard. We want Nigerians to understand that for now, let us have interest in our national unity, national progress, and democratic government in this country. Not a case of an individual who we think they have been uh, enchanted uh, for, for participating in any peaceful protest or not. We all agree and we are aware that there were violence in some areas during the, the protest. Some actually came out and we won't. Some actually came out to have peaceful protest why some came out to truncate the system and cause chaos. It's evident. Many of you here were victims of attacks. I know my brother, about three or four of you were attacked during the protest. There's no violent, there's no peaceful protest that will cause harms, injuries, pains and agonies on any fellow citizen. The moment that is recorded, it is no more peaceful. But the fact is we should be able to separate and demarcate between those who are actually having peaceful protests and those who want to leverage on that to cause chaos in the country. We will continue to spread our tentacles, to fish out and identify these individuals who want to run down the system, who want to always hide under peaceful protests to cause chaos in Nigeria. They are all out there and we will get them one by one. But we just want Nigerians to understand and be on the same page with us to see beyond the rumors in the news, the rumors on social media that Nigeria government or the police or other security forces are with chanting peaceful protesters. No, it is not. With what we have on ground, we're still going to continue to, with our investigation. I'm sure we're still going to get more suspects in connection with this particular terrorism act in this country. The Nigeria Police Force has launched a comprehensive investigation into the activities of a foreign, foreign national and subversive elements plotting to undermine the democratically elected government in Nigeria through unconstitutional regime change and orchestrating violence across the country. Following extensive intelligence gathering and collaboration with other security agencies, Ten suspects have been apprehended who receive substantial financial backing from foreign sources to destabilize the country. Preliminary findings suggest the orchestrated and funded violent protest, disseminated false information, and engaged in other unlawful activities to create anarchy and justify their illegal plots to overthrow the democratically elected government. Investigations have identified a foreign mercenary, Andrew Wang, also known as Andrew Povich, or Drew Povey. The man has many identities. A British national who built a network of sleeper cells to topple the government and plunge the nation into chaos. He rented a space at the labor house in Abuja for an Ivor Valley bookshop and established stars of nation schools as a cover for his subversive activities. Documentary evidence and confessions revealed that Andrew Wayne issued directives, monitored progress, 
and provided finance and operational guidance to achieve all constitutional regime change in Nigeria. He mobilized and deployed several billions of Naira to his Nigerian collaborators, urging them to mobilize the public to violently storm police facilities and military barracks, anticipating a bloodbath that would instigate international condemnation of the Nigerian government. These acts are in clear violation of the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2011 and other relevant laws of this country. Since the commencement of investigations, and Duane has fled the country. He and one of his local coordinators, one lucky, Ehis Obinya, have accordingly been declared wanted and global hunting for them has commenced in connection with this investigation. The ten other suspects already apprehended have been arraigned before a competent court of law today, Monday, September 2, 2024, for criminal conspiracy, terrorism financing, treasonable felony, subversion, and cybercrime. These suspects include Angel Love Innocent Female, Opalua Eleojo Simon Male, Michael Tobiloba Adaramoye A.K. Lenny Male, Suleiman Yakubu, male, Buari Lawa, male, Mosiu Sadiq, male, Abayomi Adiyemi, male, Abdusalam Zubairu, male, Nuradin Amis, male, and Bashir Belo, male. These acts, like I said earlier on, are in clear violation of the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2011 and other relevant laws of this country. Meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, IGP Kaudi, Adiolegato Kum PAD, NPM, while condemning the activities of the group, has since activated the Interpol tools and other global policing networks to support ongoing dem domestic investigations aimed at locating and apprehending the suspects at large. The IGP assures the general public that the force will leave no stone unturned in dealing with and bringing to, to the sub justice any individual or group threatening our national security and peace or promoting any movement with the motive of truncating our democratic government through unconstitutional means. We recognize and remain committed to protecting citizens constitutional guaranteed fundamental and democratic rights to peaceful assembly and free expression. However, we advise citizens to be wary of subversive elements who weaponize and commercialize protests for personal, financial, and ideological benefits. Contrary to disinformation, the invitation extended to certain individuals within the Nigerian Labour Congress leadership has nothing to do with rights advocacy and activities of the union leadership, but is aimed at clearing the relationship between the individuals and Andrew Wayne, who, in addition to plotting unconstitutional regime change, is also financing terrorism in Nigeria. Following the interaction between the police investigation team and the NLC president, there is now a clearer understanding of the focus of the ongoing police investigation and the depth of Andrew Wine's, Wine's subversive network and activities. No nation will tolerate attempts by foreign elements to interfere in its interna internal affairs, threaten national security, and organize and fund local elements to instigate uprisings aimed at destabilizing the country and engendering violent and unconstitutional regime change. The Inspector General of Police appeals 
for the cooperation and support of all law-abiding citizens in the ongoing investigation. He assures anyone with information leading to the arrest of any of the suspects declared wanted will be appreciated and rewarded handsomely. Uh, and to clear the, the insinuation that those that have been arrested uh, were actually protesters. We have credible evidence to identify these certain, certain individuals who have been working with this foreigner. We have traced links, connections with them, particularly conversations and, of course, confessions. So far, so good. Linking them up with these terrorist acts in Nigeria. These individuals that have been charged to court today, they, like I said, they have been linked with certain criminal acts and subversive activities in Nigeria. To the extent that we've been able to see or trace where financial support have been given to them with clear instructions to go and plant people into the processions or assembly of protesters to cause problem. Recollect that we had earlier issued some warnings that we got intelligence locally and internationally that certain individuals, particularly foreign mercenaries, will be deployed to truncate and disrupt the peaceful protests in Nigeria with a view to causing chaos, anarchy, and braha across the length and breadth of this country. It is evident that we actually recorded violent activities in some states in Nigeria, if not all. If not for the street intervention of the police and other security agencies to curb the excesses of some of these elements planted to cause problem in Nigeria. We want Nigerians to understand that we are not enchanting any individual or any protesters. These ones that have been charged to court are those that we have fingered in this act of subversion in Nigeria. And I'm sure all we agree that no government will sit back and allow certain individuals or group to take over or to call for regime change unconstitutionally. It is very, very important and imperative for Nigerians to understand because we have been reading the news and online, in social media, that certain individuals that have been charged to court today are actually protesters. A protester can eventually graduate to be a terrorist, depending on the activities and your engagement during that protest. And that's why the warning came out again, that Nigerians should be wary of those who are actually trying to cash out and gain financially or ideologically from any gathering in Nigeria. It is clear. We have our records. We have our credible evidence to actually identify these individuals and prosecute them accordingly. Some of you are in the court today. The case has commenced. And let's see how it goes. But we need to learn from mistakes of certain individuals so that we will not fall victim of the law. The law is sacrosanct, and of course, we have laws guiding us in this country. So the police and other security agencies will not fold their hands to see certain individuals being sponsored, organized by a foreigner to truncate our democratic government in Nigeria. Well, the investigation team has written letters to many ministry departments and agencies of government to help our investigation. Initially, you know, I told you the man had many identities. And you can see from my speech, he's using many names for reasons known to him. But we are going to unravel the reason. If he doesn't want to tell us, we are definitely going to unravel the reasons. The man is using three, four, four names and claiming many countries or many nations. But whatever it is, like I said, we'll continue to update you. Uh, this is the first phase of our interaction with you on this matter. 
aside from the press statement we made. We have deemed it necessary to engage you directly so that you can have better understanding of what is happening. And uh, because if the media is in the know and familiar with the, the facts and evidence we have on ground, it's going to be better for us the more. Uh, contrary to what we read in the news and contrary to rumors everywhere, that perhaps those that have been arrested uh, are protesters. And for those that have been charged to court, those are the people that you, you noticed during the, the protest that are actually out to vandalize. To vandalize, to destroy, to kill, to set ablaze, to do all sorts of things. We won't be able to arrest everybody, but at least we have an appreciable number of suspects to be charged to court, to serve a deterrence to those who are actually out there to hide under any peaceful protest to truncate our security networking or to orchestrate any form of anarchy in Nigeria. So the, the investigation will reveal so many things about the man. He's a very complex case uh, and we are trying to get him, like I said. We have involved uh, Interpol and international communities to see how we can actually get the suspect and we will surely get him. Number one thing. Bye.